to wa laarin eyan pelu olorun o wo pale o si subu yakata nu ogbe deni men fell nigba ti eniyan subu god to them olorun wi fun won in genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 iwe genesis se ori keta ese kini titire kejo god to man olorun so fun eniyan when he put them in the garden of eden igba to fi won si nu ogba eden he told them what to do and not what not to do o so fun won o ti won gbodo se ati won ti won gbodo se and uh, incidentally nipe yin gbogbo in chapter 3 ni ese ori keta the serpent came in a subtle way ah satan e wa wa ni ona rekere kere and he deceived them o si ton won je and he said o wi o da wi pe you shall not god say you shall not eat of every tree of the garden pe se olorun so pe eyin o eyin ko gbodo je ninu isu ogba and then in verse 2 ni ese keji and the woman said unto the serpent o be ni na wi fun ejo na pe we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden awa ma je ninu isu igi ogba but of the fruit of the tree which is the midst of the garden god had said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die sugbon ninu isu igi ti o wa laarin ogba olorun ti wi pe eyin ko gboro je ninu re be ni eyin ko gboro fowo kan ke ti o ma ba ku it was a direct instruction from god eyin ni ase san lati odo olorun wa but look at what satan said sugbon won ti satan so he told them you shall not surely die o so fun wi pe eyin ki yo ku kan these are the ways by which also satan manipulates us as christians eyin ni o ma bi generally eyin ni ona ti satan ma nlo lati fi bori awo eniyan it will tell us what is good yo so nkan to dara fun wa oh if you do this this is what will happen ah to ba se leyi o ti o se le ni yo so in verse 5 ni ese ikarun he accused god o wa fe sun kan olorun that god knows that when you eat your eyes shall be open pe to olorun mo ni pe ojo te ba ti je bayi oju yi o la ni you will be more enlightened pe o eyin o gbon se and Surely in verse 6 ni to to ni ese kefa when the woman now saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat nigba ti obirin na si ri pe igi na dara ni jije ati pe o dara fun oju ati igi ti fe lati mu ni gbon o mu ninu isu re o si je o si fun oko re pelu o si je and the bible says like satan said bibeli wa soro ge bi sa and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they saw fig trees together and made themselves aprons oju awon meyeji si la won si mo pe awon wa ni ho won si gan iwe opotopo and now where we are going where we are going ibi ti an lo gan ni in the separation between man and god o ni ipinya to wa laarin eni ati olorun look at it in verse 8 wo ni ese kejo and the art and the art the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife eat themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden won si gbo won oluwa olorun o rin ninu ogba ni itura ojo adam ati aya re si fi ara won pa mo kro ni waju oluwa verse 23 verse 23 so you see these are people that have been fellowshipping with god because of the state in which they were at that point in time awon won yi ni o tu je pe won ti jo ni ba se po pelu olorun ni ipo tan wa ni akoko god often come down to fellowship with them olorun man di gba wa lati wa ba won pe jo po because they carry the nation of god the sinless nation of god ni tori e da olorun na nru ka gbe gba na ti o le se so there was no separation between man and god tori na ko si ya pa laarin eni at olorun gba yin so as you shall go visit them gege bi se olorun ba to be won wo but in that was eight they went and eat themselves sugbon se jo en so fun wa pe won lo won lo fara pa mo when god so say we are down igba ti olorun so pe n bo lewa they gave what god illustrations and descriptions of what happened won bere si salaye ati apeju we to sele si won so in verse 23 ni ese keta le logun look at therefore the lord god sent him forth from the garden of eden to till the ground from whence it was taken nitori na oluwa olorun le jade kro ninu ogba edeni 
That was the calamity that befell man. So sin of disobedience caused the spiritual relationship between man and God. So essentially, three things happened. Romans chapter 5. If you look at it very well, one, man became sinners. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, you now see what he said there that God commanded his law towards us in that why were yet sinners? We became sinners. And that is very, very important. Look at it too in verse 19. We were, we, at that time, we were sinners. In verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. We were made sinners. By the disobedience of Adam, we became sinners. So that is the first thing that came to us. Sin of disobedience open more doors for other sins. We become, we become by nature sinners, not because we are committing sin, but by nature sinners. And that is what David said in sin, my mother conceived me. So we, we become natural instead of supernatural. We are no longer enjoying the lonely the the the, 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 the holiness estate by which God created us. So we become sinner. Number two, in that Romans chapter 5 verse 10, we say we became enemies of God. In other words, if we are enemies of God, we become the friend of the devil. And that is why he said, for if when we were enemies, we were enemies and that call for reconciliation as we are talking about and so we became enemy of God and so it is the devil that we are now controlling us and the end of us all is to go to where the devil is so number three things that happened to us because of that disobedience is in that Romans chapter 5 verse 17 men inherited death which was not in the initial plan of God so he said if for if by one man's offense Death reigned by one by one. So then now reign on us. Two types of death. Or let's call it three. But we can say broadly two. But let us say number one. Spiritual death. That is the communication between us and God was no longer there. But another one is the physical death was our total separation from this world. And the last one is eternal death. That we will now go there now totally separated from God and then we go to hell. So these are the consequences of disobedience. We became sinners. 
And then um, number two became enemies of God. Ikeji. And then number three, we inherited death. Then now reign in us. And that is what Romans chapter 3, verse 23 tries to tell us. That you no, know, when we are here, we have we have come short of the glory, say for all our sin and come short of the glory of God. So, when we were created initially, we carried the glory of God. The glory of God is even quite different from the one that we have now, even when we gave our life to Jesus. Because even now, as Christians, if you really want to enjoy the glory of God to a certain percentage, there are still certain things that we need to do. For example, when Moses went to the mountain, he was there for 40 days and 40 nights without eating. And he now have the glory of God. So, so much that followers cannot look at him face to face like this. So bad. How many of us can get to that level? And we still know, like we are told, that we are just seeing God now darkly. We we are, yet, we are yet to fully express the glory of God as it's supposed to be. Thank God for the one we are enjoying. We are enjoying it. But you can enjoy it could have been a better one. Sometimes you yourself you don't know that you have a glory as a child of God. There's a glory in you. The, the, your enemy knows your glory. They identify you as a child of glory. And that is why you have not been tampered with. But what I'm telling you is the glory that we have initially is greater than that one. I wonder sometimes when I pass through uh, some areas where you have this uh, area boys of very, very difficult side, you will see they say, oh, pastor, 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 pastor. It is not they that is that saying that. It's the glory of God that they saw. And I've told us several times, somebody who told me that we're be serving this God you are serving. We are, I've taken your name to this place. But we can't tamper with your glory. And somebody also went somewhere else. And he was so concerned about us, myself, and my family, or my or wife. Or or he thought, ah, we ought to have done this. He was not aware we have been doing it. So he was so concerned. And he went to prophets. And he mentioned her name. And the man said, This man you are talking, these people you are talking about, the glory of their life is more than what you think is <laughs> you are planning for them, or you think that you are. You think that they should have something like two. But their glory is more than 100. And incidentally, when she now knew what we were doing, she now told us this story. I'm telling you this so that you know you are a child of children of glory. But before you get to even the one we are talking about, there are prices that you need to pay for it. And it's because we are not paying that price today. That is the problem that we are having. But what I'm trying to say that whosoever is without Jesus or when we fell in the Garden of Eden, and that is what now 
the scripture is telling us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He said, All men have come short of the glory of God. All men. And if you read it further, you now see what happened. The next verse. If not by Christ, then we will have remained in that substandard and cut short glory. It is now when you give your life to Jesus, you are now justified fully by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. But so a life without Jesus, that sees natural, it, it, it's, it's short of the glory of God. And so this is the summary of our states. Remember, we are talking about reconciliation. Peacemakers. They are the reconciler of man to God. So, look, second thing I want us to know that now that it was the situation that we find ourselves. The position of sin. The positions of enemy of God and then rain upon us and all the summary of those three things is that we have lost our, our, our first estate. We now live short of the glory of God. But glory be unto God that Jesus said the place of reconciliation by, by, by what way? By his crucifixion on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is, it is finished. That is shed the blood. In several ways. But the blood was shed. There is no atonement without shedding of blood. Now, the blood of animals cannot do as they were doing in the past. So, we need to have a someone in person of Jesus to shed his blood for the atonement of our sin. Don't argue about that. Those of us who came from traditional worshippers or idol worshippers like me, we know and we do it. That we kill animals to as an atonement for certain things and it come to pass. And even the scripture when God wants to deliver, to deliver the Israelites, He has them to kill a lamb and put the blood by the lintel. He said, when the agent of destruction is passing, it will pass over them. And you know indeed it happened. So the same thing is happening to you too. That the blood of Jesus shall on the cross of Calvary is the first step to bring you back to uh, God. So Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said the pace of our reconciliation number one through his crucifixion die on the cross of Calvary and number two his death he has to die so that the death is supposed to die will be taken away and so, as a child of God, when you give your life to Jesus, you will only have what is called physical death. That is all. That is the passion from this 
word of sin. Then you are being translated to glory eternal. The physical death became a gateway for eternal living, eternal life. We must understand what we are explaining to us. I don't want us to assume. Because some people just think that Christianity is coming to church to receive miracles, to be rich. No! It's, it's for you to appropriate what Christ has done for you so reconcile back to God. So he dies so that you will not die. And let, let me say this. If you are only born once, you are going to die two times. Please take note of that. And that is the essence of born again. And so if you are born twice, you are born biologically like I was born. And I am not born again as a Christian. Then I will only die once. And that death is a gateway to internal life. Most of us, we are running from that death. But it's a gateway to internal life. Of recent, I watched uh, Young Cho. He narrated what happened to his Irish pastor. He died. And they were to bury him. At the time of burying him, the third day, they were doing the burial ceremony. But they were here to put him uh, inside the grave. But suddenly he rose up. And everybody scattered. Everybody, everybody scattered. <laughs> everybody came. And according to the young show, he said the man is still alive. He's an associate pastor. So he has paid for his burial. He has paid for his burial. So the burial was going on. So it's not a fiction or that kind of state story. So when the man woke up, he said, what happened? What happened? What happened? What, happened? what, happened? what, happened? what is this? What is that? He said, what is that? He said, what is that? And the man now told him what happened in that three days. But unfortunately, he saw many people, generals, house, mansions, and all the rest. But when he got his own house, it has not been completed. Because it was uncompleted, uncompleted house. But taking him to see what he saw was to answer the question in his heart, like many of us. But he didn't have So he came back. To live a correct life and do the right thing. It is not all of us will pass through that experience. So for that reason, you just need to believe. You need to exercise faith. That Christ died for you so that you will not experience eternal death. So that is number two that Jesus Christ passed through. And then the last one he did was restoration. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Can we open our scripture and see there? In Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Maybe be justified fully by his grace through redemption that is in Christ. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 8, which is very popular and we have read it. But God commended his love towards us that while we are yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. And then in verse 19, you will now see there that through him we have our peace. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one man, of one shall many be made righteous. In other words, concerning us to God, giving us peace with God. I Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. We all know that by our chastisement of peace is upon him, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. I've explained this to us. What is iniquities? What is transgression? And what is sin? All this I've explained to us. We pray in our life, our own life. So, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were, were all healed. In other words, Jesus Christ has been chastised. So that you will enjoy peace with God. And that is what Jesus has come to do for us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. No, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 14. You see there too. For he is our peace. For he has made both one. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So the wall of partition between us and God. Have been destroyed. And this happened. When he died, the moment he died, the veil of the temple cut into two. And there was darkness for three hours. What you were not able to see on the altar, you were able to see it. So our peace had been ensured by him. And that is what we learn in the Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Can you see that? Because we are an enemy. We are, we are enemies of God, as I explained to us the other time. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. So, for, for to make in himself of three, one new man, so making peace. Can you see that? Making peace for us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 also explained that to us. So Jesus Christ set the peace the peace for us. And he said, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, only by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they are things on earth and things in heaven. So Jesus Christ set the pace for reconciliation. Said the pace for reconciliation. He was the peacemaker between man and God through all these processes that we have told us. So the third step is now the assignment was passed to us as we passed to us. The assignment must be passed to us. This is the apostolic foundation that all of us must understand as Christians. And that's why we are teaching us because if you do not understand this, you can't be a peacemaker. And so the third step is that now I will make peace with God for us. 
And you now have accepted him and you have been made, you have been reconciled to God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. You now told us that the assignment have been passed across to us. We now become an ambassador for him. And that is what he said there. And all things are of God. All things are of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself? Through by who? By Jesus Christ. That is what Christ has done for us. In number two that I I told us. But look at the last phrase there. Can we read together? And are giving us what? The ministry of what? Reconciliation. Many of us, we don't know that when we are born again, we have directly accepted him a ministry. A Christian is a minister. A Christian is a minister. You don't need to wait until they put oil on you before you understand that you are a minister. Because that is the problem in the church. Why I'm not saying you should not be anointed. I'm not saying you should not be issued certificates. Because we are still in the world. But those things are secondary. But primarily as a child of God, he said he has committed unto us what? The word of what? Reconciliation. So the ministry is there with us. And look at verse 19. Because he has committed that to us. He said to wit that God was in Christ. That is the message. That is the message. God was in Christ. And that is what we know before. That in the beginning was the word and the word was the God. And God was the word. And later he said the word, the word manifest. And then he became a being like us. And that is Jesus Christ. And that is what he's telling us here. That to wit that God was in Christ. What is he doing? Reconciling the world unto himself. Not in Putin. And I want us to take note of that. Not in Putin, they are trespassed unto them again. And are committed unto them the word of reconciliation. I want us to take note of that very well. In that verse 18, that all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. In other words, the first thing was our own reconciliation. Our own reconciliation. It was when he has reconciled us that he now give us the ministry of reconciliation. That is a delegated responsibility to us. You know why many who cannot preach the gospel today? Because they themselves have not been reconciled to God. It was just a, you are just a church goer. And that is why I want to call for evangelism. To go and tell people that they need to reconcile to God. That becomes so difficult for them. That when we ask them to come, to come and destroy their enemies. Or to, pros- to, to prosper. 
prosper. But if actually we have been reconciled with Christ and we know we have the ministry of reconciliation and you don't want to fail in that ministry because your destiny is attached to that ministry. You'll be excited to do that. Anything about the work of God, you'll be so excited. Whatsoever will be reconciled man to God, directly or indirectly. You'll be able to you'll be able to bear the cost. Even with your money, with your time, with your labor. Fasting and intercession. You will give all because you must not fail God. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation. And look at it now in verse 19. He said, He is reconciling the world unto himself. Up to now, the work of reconciliation is still taking place. So reconciliation is a continuous work. It's going to be till eternity. So if I live what I'm doing now, the message that I'm preaching, somebody else will take over. And then if that one dies, Somebody else will take over until Christ himself comes. And that is what you are telling us there. That is that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. It's an assignment that is continued. And once you are alive, may I tell you, this assignment must be there. And then, so he said, he has committed it to our hands. That's a repetition, but it's for emphasis. Finally, in verse 20 on that, he said, Now, when we are, he said, Now, then, what are we? What are we? Can we shout it? What are we? Now we are ambassadors for Christ. Now we are now ambassador. The role of ambassador is very is, oh, is, is very, very important. If someone sent to another country to go and represent his mother country. So whatever is happening in his mother country, he has the responsibility of projecting it. He must not by any reason align with the view of the host country. Rather, he must project the country that send him to that country. And that is the mistake many of us are making as Christians. That we didn't, we are not, we do not know. As we are told, I think in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. We are so far away from Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. He said, Our citizenship is in heaven. So we are sent here as ambassador. Once we have given our life to Jesus. We become ambassador. And if you do anything contrary to what heaven is asking us to do, we are not preaching the kingdom assignment. We are not doing the kingdom assignment. We are not preaching sound message. We are not telling people that they must give their life to Jesus. We are not evangelizing. We are not going to a mission work. All what we are doing is just come to church, come to Bible study, and expect miracles, expect healings. And our life is not transformed, bringing people to, to Christ. One thing we have become is we become a traitor. Because if you send an ambassador to a country, even when the, 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 the sender, the sending country is doing bad, 
He must not say my country is doing bad. He must continue to defend the president and the value of that nation that sent him there. That is it. Otherwise, once he changed, he becomes a traitor. So many of us today, we are traitors. Traitors as Christians. When we are not doing what heaven says we should do. Because it now calls us that we have been given the work of reconciliation. I don't know why a Christian will feel so bad simply because he has no money. I don't know why a Christian will feel so bad because he has not built a house. I don't know why a Christian is so bad simply because he has no children. I don't know why a Christian will be so bad because he's not measuring up to his mates. He has no now. He has forgotten that the purpose of his own salvation which he got through the blood of Jesus the death of Jesus the resurrection of Jesus a precious thing it's not that all those ones what he is unable to do he has no nerves if he stay as a Christian if he can stay as a Christian and when he souls he did not allow those things to distract him. Oh, you will know tomorrow that it's more glorious than the president of a nation. Like the story that Young Gisho told us. I watched it very well. He talked about somebody in the church that was not recognized. That when he saw him, he never. His mansion was greater than him as a pastor. I have just told him that he said his own was not completed. Somebody that was not, was not given the title in the church. But he keep on reconciling man to God. He was doing his work of an ambassador. And at the end of the day, he had a mansion. Do you know that everyone you you are able to reconcile to God, a star is for you. So why are we just busy doing what God has not sent us to do? So as a peacemaker, as we close up this today, number one, we must go and tell the world that Jesus is the peace of the world. So that is where peacemaker is coming up. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. He said, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon the soldier. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Cancel The mighty God. The everlasting God. And then lastly, the Prince of what? Of peace. And in verse 7, say of the increase of his government and peace shall be no end. So you must go and tell the world as a peacemaker that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Number two, that he brought peace to the world. He gives peace. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16. Luke chapter 1 verse 79. He will in Luke chapter 1 verse 67 he said I prophesied about him the Zachariah prophesied about Jesus in verse 79 he said to give light to them that sit in darkness 
Only lati fi imole fun awon to ko ni oko shadow of death ati awon to wa ni ojiji ku He said to guide our feet into the way of peace Only lati to ipa se se wa si Olorun Lafia So go and tell people lo so fun awon eniyan in your work of reconciliation ni ibi sha ilajare that it guides the way or it guides in the way of peace pe o ma nto ese wa and that's what we have also read in verse chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. That I will be justified. We have peace with God. I was in university when I had that exposition. I jump up. I jump up. Because I saw the weight of sin on me. But when I now knew. That I will be justified with Christ. And I have peace with God. Oh, everything I was passing through. Oh, I just have the peace of God. How you do go and tell people? And in Acts chapter 10, verse 36. He can proclaim the gospel of peace. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter, okay, the gospel of peace. Okay, the that was from Jesus Christ. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. And then go and tell people that you have been bestowed as a disciple, that you have been given the Gospel of peace. In Joshua chapter 14, verse 27, as we close. As I have told us earlier, sacrifice for sin. Brings people, brings people with God and give them inner peace. And that is what you have in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And in, in John chapter 14, verse 27. My peace have I given unto you. He gave peace to the disciples. And in 2021, John 2021, but look at it. Peace I live with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. So excuse me, know that you have the peace of God. Because Jesus is the peacemaker. So in conclusion, the world, any world without Jesus is a crisis. And that's why you read in John chapter 3, verse 35. He said, The Father loved his son, and he committed everything to his hand. So, whosoever is not in Jesus Christ is in crisis. What is it that you are looking for? Everything is in crisis. Therefore, we must preach Jesus. Jesus must be preached. Evangelism and mission work must be the priority to be a peacemaker. Humanity must not be made must be made to reconcile to God. And the question is, how are you handling this? As a believer, you recognize you have the ministry of reconciliation. It is an essential work for unbelievers. And that for a believer. And that is what is said in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. We are doing ourselves when we don't preach the gospel. We are doing ourselves. We are doing ourselves. We are doing ourselves. Therefore, let us take up the work of the mission. We should stop depriving ourselves of the blessing. 
being a peacemaker this is very, very important can we be on our feet therefore we must be a peacemaker by bringing people to God through Jesus Christ Jesus Christ said Father send me so I send you you must be a peacemaker by reconciling man to God when our sister was praying for us the other time or leading us in prayer he said we should confess our sin of not preaching today and that's a true conversion you are busy with what you want for yourself you neglect the soul the assignment God has given to you we ask you to do this in the house of God we have to force you you don't need to be on the people like us before you pray the gospel be a peacemaker and you become the sons of God can we just cry unto God at this hour say father help me not to fail in the ministry you are given to me and we start to pray he said we are ambassador I will be given the work of the ministry and that's why Jesus Christ said Blessed are the peacemakers. All they shall be called the sons of God. So let us at this hour humble ourselves before the Lord. That before now, I do not know that I have a ministry. But now I have known that I have a ministry of reconciliation. Lord, where I have failed you, have mercy on me. Me. We have allowed things of the world to take over my life, preventing me from preaching the gospel that Jesus came to reconcile man back to God. You failed to do that. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. At this hour, you have known the reason why we need to reconcile back to God. And I shall lend us as you are hearing me. Indeed, I feel we be consigned to God. Or you are still living in your low estates. You are still a sinner. You are still an enemy of God. And death is raining over your life. Many of us, we are doing all manner of things today so that we will not die. But as I've told us, if you are born two times, you will only die once. And that death is a gateway to a greater glory for you. So you don't need to live under fear. Whosoever is still living under fear of death, indeed he has not been reconciled with God. I mean it and I mean it. Because a, glory, a greater glory is, is there for you. But you must walk here and on earth while you are living. The reason why God spare your life is not just to be acquiring many things. He say all these things the Gentiles seek. But for you, the provision is there already for you. Say, Lord, help me set my priority right. I will wait so for you. I want to be a peacemaker. I want to be a peacemaker. I want the glory that I've lost to come back. That as I've had this message today, Baba,
Lord, we worship you. Because you're a God that loves us so much that God in Christ reconciling the world to himself and are giving all the work of reconciliation. Lord, we want to thank you. Our prayer this hour, oh God, in any area where we have failed you, we seek for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. The Bible says mercy triumph over Bible over judgment. Let your mercy work for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask, O oh God, that as we go, we have had this message, we will go so for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will expand our course, we will add further to our gold in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Lord, we bless you, worship you. I now declare whatsoever may be our problem. That Satan is using to shit us. I speak by the power of the living God. Let there be a divine solution. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Go and prosper. Go and be kingdom investor. In the name of Jesus, all problems shall be. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. God will rely upon you as his faithful ambassador. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. Lord, we give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And amen. 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 We are blessed in Jesus' name. So shall we be seated?